Okay, guys, moving on with functions and graphs. We're going to take a little closer look at all those functions and graphs. And we're going to learn to represent relationships with tables, graphs, and equations. So how do we see functions on a graph? How do we see a function as an equation and in a table? And we're going to use this thing called the vertical line test to determine whether a relationship or a relation is sometimes what it's called, is a function or not. Okay. So let's just recall from what we've already done. Let's try that again. Let's recall from what we've already done whether or not this is a function. So remember, a function has one output for each individual input, right? So if I look at each of these inputs, I have a one. Does one correspond to anything other than a four? And it does not. Does 2 correspond to anything other than a 3? It does not. 3 only corresponds to 4. And 4 only corresponds to 3. So this is indeed a function. There is one output for each individual input. Notice something about this table. And this is, again, some review. My inputs do not repeat. I have a 1, a 2, a 3, and a 4. If the inputs do not repeat, then I'm going to say, yes, this is a function. My outputs can repeat. I have a 4 here, a 4 here. I have a 3 here and a 3 here. My outputs do repeat, but that's OK. It's just that my inputs cannot repeat. So let's take a look at the next one. All right, um, here we don't have numbers. We have some colors instead. Um, what does red correspond to? Red only corresponds to a rose. Blue? only corresponds to a sky. Oh, but wait a second. Is that true? Blue also corresponds to the ocean. So my inputs repeat. Again, when my inputs repeat, that is not a function. I have two blues in my inputs. I have a repetition in my inputs. So that is not a function. I have one input, blue, that corresponds to two different outputs, sky, my board's a little off here, as well as ocean. Okay, so one input that corresponds to two different outputs. That is not a function. So let's see if we can make sense of this one. Um, capital A corresponds to lowercase a, capital B to lowercase b, capital C to lowercase c, and capital D to lowercase d. For each input, there is one and only one output. So if we think about our alphabet, uppercase and lowercase, as a set of values, or as a set of ordered pairs, I have A, lowercase a, B, lowercase b. And that's always going to be the case, where the uppercase letter only corresponds to one lowercase letter. So is this a function? Yes, that is a function. All right, here are some different ways to represent a function. So we can represent functions more than in just tables. So this is what we've done so far. We have a table of values where we have an x and a y, or an input and an output, right? An input and an output is just like saying x comma y. It's an ordered pair. It's an ordered pair on a graph. So then I'm going to go straight over to graph. If our table of values are just ordered pairs on a graph, we can represent our functions as graphs, too, because we can just plot each one of those ordered pairs, and we can see that on a graph. Okay, so a function is going to look something like this on a graph. Functions can look all sorts of different ways on a graph. We've been talking about linear functions. So a linear function is going to be a line, a straight line, on a graph. So you can re represent a uh, function as a graph. Right? I could put these ordered pairs in a table of values. I have an ordered pair right here that looks like it's 1, 2. So if I were to represent this graph, in a table, I could just say x, y, and I could list my ordered pairs, 1, 2. And I could keep doing that for all sorts of different ordered pairs on that graph. Well, we can do that one down here. So I have another one that is a negative 1 and a negative 2, right? So I can keep going, and I can list another ordered pair. 
right? So it's going to be a function because none of my x values, none of my inputs are going to repeat. So I can represent that same table of values as a graph. Notice on that graph, you have an equation that goes along with that graph. So I can also represent functions as equations. Hey, remember, when I write a linear equation, y equals rate times x plus start value, right? So I could just plug in a plus 0 here. So 2x plus 0, or my rate, or my slope. Just recall real quick that a rate is the same as a slope. So my slope of 2 over 1 times x plus my start value in this case is 0, right? Or it's where it crosses the y-axis. So there's my function as an equation. I can also do a diagram. A diagram looks very much like a table of values. Um, and sometimes we call a diagram a map as well. You might see it referred to as a map. So on this diagram or on this map, we have a domain and a range. Now remember, that's just x and y for input and output. I'm just going to say, running out of room over there. So domain, x, and input are all the same thing. y, range, and output are all the same thing. So it's very much like my table of values. So an x value or a domain of 3 corresponds to a range or a y value of 6. Negative 14 corresponds to negative 28. And if I were doing this as ordered pairs, I would just say x is negative 14 and y is negative 28. Now that's a little messy. So these are all different ways that I can represent functions. So how do I determine if something is a function on a graph specifically? I'm going to use this thing called the vertical line test to determine whether something is a function or not on specifically on a graph. So we're going to look at how we use that vertical line test. But just in general, a vertical line will hit a function one time only on a graph. So what I mean by that is this. So let's take a look at this first one. If I draw a vertical line anywhere on that graph, no matter where I draw it, each of those lines only hits the graph in one spot. So if the vertical lines, no matter where I draw them, only hit the line in one spot, then yes, that is a function. Okay, so again, vertical line test. Let's try it on this one. So if I draw a vertical line anywhere on this graph, notice that, whoops, not there. Let me try that one more time. I got a little rogue line down there. So we'll just stick with three because that's really all it's going to take. Notice that each of these lines hits the graph at two spots. Okay, so this is not a function because it hits that graph in two places. So why is that not a function? So remember, the definition of a function is for every input, there's only one output. Well, let's pretend there's some hash marks on here. One, negative two, negative three, negative four. So let's say I pick an x value of negative one, right? There's my negative one. So let's say this is negative one, negative two, neg or, sorry, positive one, positive two, positive three. Negative one, negative two, negative three. So if I have an x value of negative one, what is my y value for that? if I look at the graph. So here's my x is negative 1. If I follow that up to find my y value, I get somewhere close to a 3, not quite a 3. For now, we're going to round. So when x is negative 1, y is 3. But it's not just positive 3, because if I follow that down, my graph also 1, 2, it also hits the graph at y equals negative 3. Right? So there's a positive 3 and there's a negative 3. So when I pick that one x value of negative 1, I'll make that a little bit more clear. So where x is negative 1, I can follow that up to hit a y value of 3. I can also follow it down to hit a y value of negative 3. Okay, so when x is negative 1, y is 3. But when x is negative 1, y is also negative 3. My x values repeat, not a function when those x values repeat. So let's take a look at one more example. 
Now, at first glance, this might look like a function. If I draw a vertical line there, it only hits the graph once, right? Right here, it only hits the graph once. Right here, it only hits the graph once. So you might want to say that's a function. However, what happens if I draw a line right here? It's going to hit that line here, 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 here. So wherever this is vertical, if I draw a vertical line through there, it's going to hit that vertical spot infinitely through that, that place, right? Or it's going to hit that, ver that vertical section at all points on that section. So if I draw a vertical line anywhere on one of those vertical pieces, it's hitting that line infinite times, right? So this is not a function. So anytime there is a vertical line on a graph itself, it's not going to be a function. Let's take a look at um, an example of filling out a function table. So all right, here we have a function table. And I can tell this is a function table because this is our, or I can tell it's a function because this is a linear equation. It's a linear equation. I know it's a linear equation because I have a rate or a slope times x plus, or in this case, minus a start value. That's going to give me a straight line, a straight line on a graph. A start value is negative 2. A straight line on a graph is always going to be a function. I just did a quick sketch there. That's not the actual graph. But I started at negative 2 on my y-axis. And I have a positive slope of 3 is the sketch of that graph. So how am I going to fill out this function table? So if my x value is 1, and this is input, this is output, or x and y. So if my x value is 1, I have 3 times 1 minus 2. 3 minus 2 is 1. Um, let's go through and do these. Actually, I'm going to pause. You go ahead and fill out the rest of that table in your notebook, and then we'll get back to it. All right, compare your answers with mine. Let's make sure I didn't make any mistakes. So for the first one, or for this one anyway, I don't have an x value. I have a y value. So I filled in 5, or I substituted 5 for y this time instead of x. So 5 equals 3x minus 2. I added 2 to both sides. So I have 7 equals 3x. And then finally, I divided by 3. So x is 7 thirds. For my next one, again, also over here, x was 10, so I substituted 10 in place of x. So 3 times 10 minus 2, and I got 28. Again, for this last one, I have my y value, not my x value. So I did negative 2 equals 3x minus 2, added 2 to both sides to get 0 equals 3x, and divided by 3 to get 0 equals x. So now you can see from this table of values that it's a function because every x value corresponds to only one y value. All right, and we're going to stop there. And this is going to be our classwork for class.